What's up YouTube, my name is Kenneth. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I edit my Milky Way shots. Most time when I'm editing Milky Way shots it's only because I'm doing time lapse as well. And so here you can see the time lapse sequence and these already have settings applied to the raw file, but this one doesn't. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take a single uh, shot of the Milky Way and how to edit it in Photoshop. And I'm gonna be using CS 5.5. Um, and I think it could be uh, these kind of techniques can be used uh, pretty much on any version of Photoshop. Uh, I don't have Lightroom, and so that's why I'm not using Lightroom. Uh, and I wish I did have Lightroom, but uh, I don't have it now. Maybe I'll have it in the future. So here we go. We're going to show you how I go through my process, and I've kind of come up with this over the past two two years, year and a half or so, as long as I'm doing this, and um, it's uh, been a lot of fun. So let me show you how I do it. First, in Camera Raw. I'm going to bump up the exposure so you can see what's going on. Then I'll give it a curve. So you give the curve buttons. Let's go to linear and uh, let's give it a high contrast curve. And what I'll do is I'll select both points in this high contrast curve by holding the shift button down. And now they're both selected and you can move the curve around. And what I want to do is I want to find a spot that looks good but most of the time I'm looking here in the Milky Way and I want to bring out the detail in the Milky Way so we want to find a spot in which the the contrast is right there in the Milky Way and about here looks pretty good I think that look, I think that looks good so then we can go back and we can now really see the colors in the Milky Way we can now play with uh, the color temperature and, and I found that I really like between 3500 and 4000 uh, Kelvin and so let's play with it about here somewhere and that's pretty uh, consistent for the Milky Way and that's how I like it uh, we can see it's a little green so we can add some magenta and make it a little purpley not too purpley hopefully that looks pretty good I think uh, we can play with it and get it just how we want it and actually I think 3800 is where I usually have it and it looks really good here at 3800 so we'll leave it at 3800 um, next thing I like to do is I like to do noise reduction and the noise reduction works great and so I shot this with a Canon T3i which is a crop sensor and this was at 1600 ISO and you can see there's quite a bit of noise so we can um, use luminance here we can give it about between 50 and 75 is where it works good for this camera and ISO setting uh, and about 60 I think looks pretty good we can change the detail. If you put the detail down to zero, uh, the luminance detail, it'll look kind of like the image has been painted. It looks kind of mushy and not very good. So you want to get some detail. So let's add the detail. About 50, 50 is about right. If you go up too high, it'll look noisy again. So you want to find a spot where you lose that noise, but you still keep detail. And so it's about 50. About here, I think, looks good. 47, I'm going to leave it there, I think. That looks pretty good. Now we're almost done. Uh, there's, I think, one thing left that I like to do, and that is lens correction. Uh, because we're shooting wide open with this uh, this picture, it was shot at f2.8, and um, you get kind of dark corners. So we can reverse that by adding some light in the corners here in the lens corrections. And we don't want to add too much light or look bad. So you got to find a spot where it gives you kind of a flat field. Uh, and the color like on look at the horizon you want there's kind of a band of color and you want it to look the same across the horizon so you want to find a spot where it looks right it's about there uh, you want the midpoint in the correct position as well um, about 52 so I mean that's almost I almost didn't need to touch it okay I think that's it let's go back and check um, you could play with the vibrance and the saturation, but we're going to do that in Photoshop a little bit later if you wanted to. I probably won't anyway. Clarity, uh, if you use clarity, it'll sharpen the image, but it'll also add halos over some of the stars and maybe halos around the edges of the, the foreground. So um, I don't really like touching clarity. I used to use it, but I found that it's, it actually uh, hurts the, the photo more than it helps. So leave clarity out of it. And I think we're good. So let's open the image in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and uh, the first thing we want to do in Photoshop is we want to isolate the foreground from the background so we kind of edit them separately. The way we're going to do that is we're going to copy the background layer so we can grab the background layer and drag it over this icon here and it'll copy it. So now we have the background layer. Now we need to uh, select the foreground from the background. Uh, an easy way to do that is to use the quick selection tool. 
you can go up here right click on this tool if it's the magic wand you can change it back to the quick selection tool now what we can do is we can kinda of just draw and select the foreground and it does a pretty good job it won't be perfect but it, it does a good job and this is I found this is the quickest way I can get a good selection going especially for this like tutorial because I don't need to make it perfect right now but you can see it does a pretty good job so that's pretty good then we can zoom in and fix it so zoom in here and we can hold the alt button and it'll remove some of the selection we've made and remove a little more that looks better we can add to spots that it missed So once you're happy with your selection, you can now make sure the background copy is selected. You can then click uh, this button here and it'll create a mask. Now what we're going to want to do is we can add like a curve or maybe color correction to this background copy. Let's add a curve now. And what you want to do is you want to make this curve only apply to this layer. So you can select the curve, then holding the Alt button, you can click right between the two layers. You see this? there's a, uh, an icon that pops up. And now this curve only applies to this layer. So we can change the curve. You can see it's only only um, adding to our foreground. So we can actually like make it a silhouette if we wanted to, or we could make it super bright and you know show off some of the details in there. Um, but I think for us for now, I think we'll just darken it just a hair. You can also do uh, color correction, color balance. Um, a lot of times the the foreground will have a different uh, white balance setting than the, the background the Milky Way um, but in this case it actually looks pretty good so I'm not going to touch it so now what we can do is select the background we can add a curve and now this curve will only do the uh, the sky so that's that's why we wanted to isolate the foreground from the background so um, I'm going to remove that point and before we uh, add anything here I want to bring out the detail and stuff in the Milky Way. So let's um, add to this mask. Let's first paint the mask completely black. So I'll hit the G button and that will select our uh, paint bucket. And we can paint black. We can drop black on the background. And now we're not going to affect anything because uh, the, the mask is completely covered. So what we can do now is we hit the B button uh, for brush and we can paint back white and you can see I have a curve here that's really bright and it's only affecting the portion of the mask that we're painting so I'll leave it bright now just so that we can see what we're going to brush as you can see as we go over our foreground our foreground isn't affected because we've already masked it out so that's why we did that and right now we're just going to paint over the Milky Way uh, the parts that we really want to bring out the detail of and we want to brighten and we want to uh, make look good so right now all we're doing is we're painting over the Milky Way and that's I think pretty good like that so then what you can do is you can see as this curve it uh, affects only this section here but it looks really bad because our mask has such a sharp line and so what we're gonna do now is we're going to soften this line we're gonna select the mask and we're gonna go to filter we're gonna go to blur and then Gaussian blur and we're going to give it a huge radius of this blur, something huge. So I'm just going to leave it at the highest point, 250. And now when we uh, change the brightness and stuff in this curve, it's only affecting the Milky Way. So we can kill the Milky Way or we can make it super bright. Uh, but we don't want to do either of those things. So I'm going to remove this point. Now let me show you how I uh, bring out a lot of this detail. First let's zoom in a little bit on the Milky Way. And I use this button here in the curves and what this does is it allows us to uh, when we, we we cursor over the picture over here on the curve you can see the point that that position is represented on the the curve so what we want to do is we want to um, select a dark area here in this dark band of dust in the Milky Way we want to select that spot we also want to select the spot right here in the Milky Way the brighter area so that's given us two points on our curve now uh, the higher one is the brighter area and the lower one is the darker area and what we want to do is we want to create contrast in between the two and so the way we do that is we can bump up this one here and we could either we can even bring this one down and make the the dust lane darker you can see it's really brought out detail already let's turn off that curve and turn it back on you can see the detail it's brought out maybe a little too much the colors might not be quite right 
It looks a little bit kind of green to me, but uh, that looks pretty good. So we can to fix the colors. You can actually change, go over here and go to green. It looks a little too green. So let's darken the green just a bit. It's going to make it a little more purple. Let's go to red and we can um, take a little bit of red out there too and that'll make it a little bluer. I like the, a bluer look. I think that looks better. So before and after you can see how much uh, detail and, and brightness that's brought. Let's go back to RGB and we can change, uh, we can play with it a little bit more and get it exactly how we want it. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so one thing I really like to do, I think that really adds to these Milky Way shots, is you really want to bring out the detail in these dust lanes. And one way to do that is to sharpen them. And so here's how I sharpen those dust lanes. Is first, I'm going to copy the background layer. So now we have two background layers again. And we're going to select this top one, and we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go to Sharpen, and then Unsharpen Mask. So because we want to uh, sharpen the uh, Milky Way, the Milky Way, these bands are kind of further apart. They're not right next to each other. And so they're quite, so this radius needs to be pretty big. It needs to be about 40 to 50, something like that. Let's make it 50. And then the amount, we're gonna to wanna to do more than you would think. So uh, let's, let's bring it up to something really high. So let's do uh, 90. Yeah, that's really high, right? That looks doesn't look very good right now, but trust me, this is going to look good in a minute. So I think this looks good. Something like that. That looks great. We can hit OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make this mask only apply to the Milky Way. So let's add a mask to it. I'm going to hit the G button to give us the uh, the bucket, and we're going to paint black. We're going to drop black on there. So now it doesn't affect anything. And now we can hit B for brush and we can paint back white. So let's make it white again. And we can paint back in the areas where we want to bring this detail back in the Milky Way. You can see it's just painting this detail in these dust lanes. It's really bringing them out, making them pop a little bit. I think that that's really making it really pop. And so uh, once you get it like this, you're going to want to do the same thing. This mask is, is harsh. So we want to soften the mask again. So select the mask, go back to filter. We're going to go to blurs again, Gaussian blur, and we'll make it a huge blur again. So we're going to put it up to 250 um, and you can hit OK. So now we can see before and after with the sharpening. It's really sharpened the Milky Way, but it still looks like it's too much. And so. What you can do to bring it back is you select the uh, the layer here and we can change the opacity. We can drop it down to about 50. Somewhere in there. So we'll do 60. So now look before and after and that looks really good. I think that's just enough to make it really pop a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, this picture is almost done. I think there's one last thing I want to do and that is the horizon. Down here at the horizon, uh, sometimes it gets really hazy it's kind of brown. Sometimes you'll get uh, a lot of light pollution. And so let's make one more curve that, uh, and we're going to make a mask only to cover this below the Milky Way, kind of the horizon area. So the same thing, we're going to drop black, use the, the paint bucket, black onto our mask, and then we're going to paint bucket, we're going to use the brush, we're going to do white. I'm going to give it a high curve right now just so we can see what we're painting. So we're going to paint this area underneath the Milky Way. Okay, that's good enough. And then we're going to want to um, soften the mask again. So we can go to uh, Filter. And we, Gaussian Blur is already up here. So we can just redo the Gaussian Blur. And it's softened that up. So now when we move this curve, you can see it's only affecting the portion under the Milky Way. And we can get it just right. And I think it's too bright, actually. We want to bring out the Milky Way, and this is kind of brought out too much. So we can pull that back just a little bit. Not too much. We can also color correct. Um, a lot of times, uh, the like um, light pollution will be kind of brown or orange or something like that. And you might want to get rid of that. And so then you can you can come in here. And right now, it's kind of looking greenish to me. So let's, let's pull back on the green just a bit. 
and red now it's a little bit red and we want I like to go for a little bit bluer and so by pulling back on the green and the red it's going to bring out the blue a little bit I think that looks good so let's go back to RGB and um, play with that a little bit that's helped the color correcting color corrected a little bit and about there I think looks good let's zoom out so here it is um, before we've affixed the the horizon and that's after and I think it, it also helps blend this really dark silhouetted foreground with the background I think that helps blend it a bit anyway uh, I think we've got a really great image here the last thing I might do before we call it done is I'd, I'd check the foreground make sure we get the foreground curve just how we want it and I don't want it too bright I think it looks funny when it's too bright like that so let's bring it back darken a little bit almost a silhouette but you want to see some of this detail in, in the rock here this is that mono lake and this is called Tufa it's a really interesting rock formation um, anyway I think that looks good uh, let's save the image and see what the before and after looks like so let's save it that's what we started with that's what we ended up with. Isn't that amazing? I think it looks great. So that's pretty much everything I've learned in the past year and a half or so of uh, going out and taking pictures every month of the night sky. And I hope it helped you guys. This is my current walkthrough. Um, I'm always learning. Let me know if there's something I could have done better. Uh, I'd love to know about it. Um, if this really helped you, let me know if it helped. And that's pretty much it. If you like this tutorial, let me know. Maybe I'll make some more tutorials in the future. Thanks, guys. And, of course, have a great day.